So, the sixth lesson we learned is very simple. Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. In other words, take what God has given you. Use it for the kingdom's sake. Use it in God's plan for the kingdom. Find what God's concerned about, where his heart is, and invest in those areas. And you'll find yourself blessed. Close with this story. If I gave you a paper clip this morning, what would you do with it? Let me give you a red paper clip. What would you do with it? You'd like me to put it in your pocket and end up on the, you know, dresser at home, and you'd say, why in the world would Wells give me a paper clip? How many of you heard of the name of a fellow named Kyle McDonald? Anyone heard of Kyle McDonald? A couple of years back, he had a red paper clip. And he also had a dream. Could he use the community power of the internet to barter that paper clip for something better? Could he have an investment strategy with a little red paper clip? Well, he had a dream. He wanted a house. He was homeless. All he had was a paper clip. So he advertised a paper clip on Craigslist.com, and two women swapped a fish shaped pen for it. They gave him a pen for a red paper clip. Why they wanted a red paper clip, I don't know, but you know what? He wanted the red fish shaped pen. Later that same day, McDonald was able to trade the pen for a small ceramic doorknob with a smiley face on it. Because it looked like it was a little more valuable than the, just the fish shape of the pen. Well, then he traded the doorknob for a Coleman camping stove. Doorknob, camping stove. Don't know what he was thinking, but he was investing what he had. Well, next, a U.S. Navy Marine swapped a generator in return for the stove. I was going to skip over this, but it's just the way the article was written. Then a guy from New York swapped instant party package, which was a beer keg and a neon mud sign, for the generator. But he didn't keep it, and we don't, and he didn't drink it. Uh, the beer, because he would have been drinking his investment, right? Okay. The beer package went to a DJ in Montreal in exchange for a snowmobile. Party package, we got a snowmobile. We started with a paper clip. By this time, McDonald was starting to attract attention. He was invited on to Canadian TV to tell a story. As a result, he was able to trade the snowmobile for an all-expense-paid trip to an obscure little town in Canada called Yak. It's Y-A-H-K. Well, then he traded the trip for a 1995 delivery van, and then he gave the van um, to someone who wanted to, uh, to a friend who wanted to haul her gear around in exchange for a recording contract with studio time and a promise to pitch the finished CD to music executives. Well, then he swapped the recording contract with the singer who gave him a year's accommodation in a house in Phoenix. Arizona. And then he exchanged the accommodation in Arizona, oh Lord, for a day with Alice Cooper. <laughs> and the day with Alice Cooper he swapped for a snow globe of the band uh, 155, K155. Now if you thought it was weird to swap to get this, the K, oh I'm sorry, KISS. Boy, see, I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to use this or not. I'm sorry, but I decided we had, we had just a few more minutes. That came up this kiss. I need to swallow my paper clip for glasses. All right, we we're almost there. The kiss snow globe was swapped for an acting part in a movie. Apparently, the actor Corbin Bernson, you remember him from L.A. Law, uh, is an avid snow globe collector and was particularly interested in this Kiss snow globe. So he swapped his part in the movie for the snow globe. Finally, a local municipality in Saskatchewan, Canada, handed over the title of deed for a house for the movie 
role. And that's the amazing story of how Kyle McDonald turned a red paperclip into a house. And he says he has offers from Hollywood Studios to turn his story into a film. And now Kyle McDonald is an amazingly talented negotiator salesman. And he used his talent to turn a paperclip into a house. Here's a question. To what end? To what end? See, Jesus' parable of the talents is a glimpse of the future, a glimpse of the first day of eternity. It teaches us to leverage our gifts and talents and abilities that we've been given and to turn a kingdom profit and live a life that's pleasing to God. Word more than a house is to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. And the first question that will be asked when we stand before Jesus will be the question we asked this morning. What did you do with what you've been given? Let's work on being better stewards. Is that a fair deal for this 2012? Let's encourage each other to be better stewards of the gifts we're given. And as a church, let's be better stewards of everything we have and invest it wisely in the kingdom. Let's stand together in prayer.